Well, it's a problem a lot of people just don't know about. We're talking about stolen guns used for violent crime. Guns that are often stolen from police officers. And it's something that's hit very hard here in the Bay Area. The gun that kid killed Kate Steinley on Pier 14 was stolen. So what's being done about it? Senior investigative reporter Stephen Stock is with us. And Stephen, uh, among the many questions, do local cops get reprimanded for leaving their guns unattended? Most of the times, no, Raj. Nationwide, we discovered nearly 2 million lost or stolen guns reported to the FBI just in the last 10 years alone. Among the people who've had their guns stolen are, as you mentioned, police officers. In fact, experts say police guns are often targeted for theft just because criminals know they can then use those weapons in other crimes. Kate stopped and wanted to take a selfie. Kate Steinley's parents, Jim and Liz, can't forget that day back in July when a bullet ricocheted off the pavement at San Francisco's Pier 14 and killed her. You know, a shot rang out and she turned to me and said, uh, help me, Dad. The Steinleys shared their story with NBC Bay Area's Raj Mathai as their case intensified a national debate over immigration policy. A debate that focused on the man charged in Kate's killing, Juan Francisco Lopez Sanchez, an undocumented immigrant who'd been picked up by federal authorities. But Lopez Sanchez was later released from a local jail because San Francisco is a sanctuary city and will not hold people on federal immigration charges. That's carelessness. I mean, it's pure and simple. Today, the Steinleys family attorney, Frank Petrie, isn't talking about the controversy over sanctuary cities but about another detail from Kate's death that has received far less attention. She'd be here today if somebody took the simple precaution, which was required, of keeping that gun locked. Officials say the gun used to kill Kate Steinle had belonged to a federal officer, a U.S. Bureau of Land Management ranger. It was stolen after it had been left unsecured in a backpack in a vehicle, an apparent violation of BLM policy. I mean, we need to know that when law enforcement officers are given the privilege to carry around weapons, that they are going to be held to the requirements that are imposed in making sure that they're secured and not easily available for criminals to use in crimes. This isn't the only case of a police officer losing his or her gun to theft. A four-month-long investigation by NBC Bay Area uncovered hundreds of police-issued weapons lost or stolen and put back onto our streets during the last five years. Well, they're a sure target. Where there is a cop, there is a gun. Matthew Horace retired after nearly 25 years as a special agent for the Federal Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives. For the last three years, he served as chief security officer at FJC Security Services in Long Island, New York. Because let's face it, these guns aren't being stolen for people to target shoot. They aren't being stole, stolen by legal residents or people who otherwise can go into a gun store and purchase guns. They're being stolen by criminals to be used by criminals to be used in crimes. We ask for a list of lost and stolen guns from major police departments throughout the Bay Area, from San Francisco's police department to Berkeley's, California's Highway Patrol to Santa Clara and San Mateo Sheriff's offices. From those agencies alone, we found 58 guns that have been lost or stolen in the last five years. All but a handful of those weapons have never been recovered. The Federal Drug Enforcement Agency told us their officers reported lost or stolen 134 guns in the last five years. From time to time, um, we have become aware of organizations that uh, steal firearms that target law enforcement officers. Graham Barlow is resident agent in charge at the Federal Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives Sacramento Field Office. Very often stolen firearms fuel other crimes. They're specifically targeted for other crimes. Barlow says it's not just guns stolen from cops but also weapons stolen from everyday legal gun owners that are a safety risk for everyone. According to the FBI, in the last decade alone, more than one million guns were reported stolen nationwide. We obtained this trace list of all guns lost or stolen in California since 2010. Of the 65,000 guns on the list, 58,000 were stolen. In the Bay Area alone, 268 guns were stolen just in the first two months of this year. Firearms are uh, highly sought after and there are rings that 
we have worked and continue to work that specifically are looking for firearms and specifically targeting houses or persons because they believe that they are firearms owners. Including law enforcement. Including law enforcement, absolutely. Here's the problem. It's far too easy for this stuff to go underreported so that nobody knows. There is no good inventory control over what weapons are issued to who and keeping track of them. In fact, we did find one police department that did just that, kept track of the guns it lost. Not only did San Jose's police department do an inventory and an audit of all its guns back in 2010, it was transparent, open, and honest about what the department found. And it wasn't good. We discovered that we have about 300 guns that are unaccounted for. Totally unacceptable. Deputy Chief Fan Yo is in charge of the San Jose Police Gun Range and Weapons Training and Inventory. Well, I'm, I'm always concerned when we have about 300 guns that are unaccounted for, and we're doing our best uh, to ensure that that situation doesn't occur again in the future. Even so, hundreds of guns remain unaccounted for. Only about 20 have been recovered. Is that a problem? Absolutely. It is something that we're concerned about. Frank Petrie applauds San Jose's police department and wishes other law enforcement agencies would follow San Jose's example. So these things keep happening and shame on us because we aren't putting pressure on our legislators to do something about this. Now to this day, Frank Petrie says Kate Steinle's family cannot get any answers from the Federal Bureau of Land Management. They still don't know if that officer whose gun was stolen was punished or even reprimanded for apparently violating agency policy. We asked for the data four months ago from many police departments, but we never heard back from Oakland's police department or even from the Federal Bureau of Land Management. The only other agency that would admit to doing an audit of its guns was California's Highway Patrol, and they would not share with us what their yearly audits of their missing gun shows. Disheartening, especially for the victims. Here. Absolutely. Thank you, Stephen. A call for action and a locked box. A San Francisco supervisor is now calling for strict new rules on how guns are transported in cars. Not just cops, he's talking about everyone. And his proposal is a result in part from our exclusive investigation on stolen guns. Tonight we have team coverage for you. The investigative unit Stephen Stock is standing by with more on a key role he played and his investigation in exposing this issue. But we begin with Christy Smith live in San Francisco. And so Christy, we're talking about a plan and a box. How do those go together? Well, let me tell you, Supervisor Campos here in San Francisco thinks that it's happened too often. A gun stolen from a car here in San Francisco and then used in a shooting. He's now expanding a proposal to try and help prevent it. The legislation, now much broader, was originally aimed at preventing guns from being stolen from off-duty law enforcement officers. In the wake of the deadly shooting of Kate Steinle, the gun used in that case belonged to a federal agent. It had been stolen from a car parked near Fisherman's Wharf. Today, Supervisor David Campos went further. We are expanding the original piece of legislation that we introduced to now apply to anyone who leaves a gun in a vehicle in San Francisco. When adding the new amendment, Supervisor Campos also referenced our recent investigative unit story, which found hundreds of guns have been lost or stolen from Bay Area law enforcement agencies over the past five years. Here's what the supervisor's now calling for. If the trunk uh, is secured and is a separate space, you can lock it in the trunk. But if it's not, uh, we want you to put it in a lockbox. So I'm coming to you as a parent who has lost a child Today, a public safety committee heard comment. Sean Richards with Brothers Against Guns supports the change. Stolen guns have been killing our kids for a very long time. Uh, the gun that was used in my brother's homicide, they were stolen guns. They killed both of my brothers. Police Chief Greg Sir is also a supporter. Just last month, he issued a bulletin on his department's policy on transporting police weapons. Campos expects resistance from the gun lobby, but says his goal is simple. We want to make sure that that gun is not, uh, doesn't end up in the wrong hands. 
Now, another reason that he considers this timely is because of the increase in car break-ins here in San Francisco. The matter will go before a committee one more time and then before the full board next month. Reporting live in San Francisco, Christy Smith, NBC Bay Area News. Christy, thank you. So we mentioned this was prompted by our investigation. We discovered those lost and stolen police weapons are on the streets unaccounted for. We aired this story on Monday and the response has been swift. Senior investigative reporter Stephen Stock is with us. And Stephen, this is now on the national radar. Absolutely, Raj. We began our investigation after the death of Kate Steinley on Pier 14 in San Francisco back on July 1st of this year. Officials say the gun used to kill Steinley belonged to a federal officer, a U.S. Bureau of Land Management Ranger. It had been stolen after it had been left unsecured in a backpack in a vehicle in apparent violation of BLM policy. Now, to find out exactly how many law enforcement guns do go missing, we filed public records requests with major law enforcement agencies in the Bay Area, as well as the state and federal government. Not every police department complied, but we did find from the half dozen who did give us records, we discovered 58 missing police weapons since 2010. Plus, the DEA reported 134 unaccounted for guns. San Jose's police department reported another 324 unaccounted for guns. That's more than 500 guns. Now, since our story first aired, we learned that ICE agents also lost 165 weapons since 2006. Experts tell us the vast majority of these stolen weapons taken from cops are used by criminals in future crimes. And as we mentioned in the report, Raj, more than one million guns are lost and stolen every year nationwide. As for San Francisco, according to the records we obtained, 10 guns were stolen from police officers since January 2010, mostly through home and auto burglaries. Raj? All right, Stephen, those numbers are staggering. And just in, new numbers involving missile firearms connected to ICE and FBI agents. Senior investigative reporter Stephen Stock first broke this story. He's here with more now for us. Stephen. Jessica, we just got this latest data today from the FBI. So far, we have covered more than 700 guns, 711 to be precise, lost or stolen by law enforcement agencies just within the last decade or so. This case involving a gun stolen from an ICE agent's car in San Francisco is not the first time that agency has had a gun stolen or lost by an agent. U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement officials tell us their agents had lost or stolen 144 weapons nationwide since 2005. At least 25 of those weapons were lost or stolen from agents located here in California, and at least three of them from here in the Bay Area. We filed public records requests with all the major law enforcement agencies in the Bay Area, local, state, and federal. We also got an update from the FBI. That agency reports losing or having had stolen 53 weapons nationwide since 2013. That includes a grenade launcher and two submachine guns. At least two of those FBI lost or stolen guns, a pistol and a rifle, came from agents based here in San Francisco. Now, our investigation also discovered that all but a few of those guns are never recovered, and most of the guns stolen by, from cops are taken by criminals to be used in the commission of other crimes. One other important note, this is the fourth homicide since July here in the Bay Area alone, where a gun stolen from someone from a vehicle has been directly linked to the crime. And two of those cases involve guns stolen from law enforcement officers who left their guns in the car. Guys? How these shootings grab the headlines, of course, shake our communities to the core when this happens, and it happens often. But experts tell us they mask another reality, which is gun violence, which is what Diane Feinstein was talking about. The issue, though, is complex. The numbers, though, are real. Senior investigative reporter Stephen Stock uh, reveals some of the, the data that you've got and some of the statistics and put this in perspective for Absolutely. us. Absolutely. That's what we're trying to do, put it in perspective, because days like today are tragic for those victimized by this violence, and no one diminishes the effect of mass shootings on our collective emotions. But according to the feds, these type of shootings make up less than 1% of all the deaths in America involving guns every year. 
It's a scene that many say is becoming too familiar in America these days. But exactly how common are these events in real numbers? Well, it depends on who is keeping track. According to the crowdsourced website, Reddit, Guns Are Cool, and its site ShootingTracker.com, data compiled by individual contributors to that site shows that through November 27, 2013, there were 331 mass shootings, resulting in 452 people dead, 1,171 wounded. ShootingTracker.com shows 301 mass shootings through the same time in 2014, with 339 people dead, 1,109 wounded. Through the same time this year, the website shows 351 mass shootings of four or more people, with 447 people dead, 1,292 wounded. Every town USA tracks it a bit differently. The group was started and funded by former New York City Mayor Michael Bloomberg. It counts four or more people killed, not including the shooter. Every town USA shows 141 mass shootings in America since 2009, including today's shooting. Every town counts 21 mass shootings in America so far this year. No matter how you count it, experts say that's a lot of violence and carnage. It's really shameful that Congress has refused to do anything when it comes to gun violence prevention in light of the horrific shootings we keep happening in this country and the fact that the public overwhelmingly wants Congress to do something about this. By the way, when you break down these numbers involving mass shootings, it's very interesting. 10% of these shootings involve a police officer being shot, as in this case. 15% involve domestic violence issues. 4% involve workplace violence. Another 4% involves some type of school, colleges, elementary schools, or whatever. By the way, almost 12,000 people a year are killed in America through handguns. And it's really interesting with this particular shooting, because now we're hearing that one of the people involved may have been a woman, which is uncommon for Again, these and, type of mass and shootings. And it brings in, perhaps, domestic violence, but it is uncommon. That's right. Usually it's a male involved, and exclusively a male. So the way the, the way those numbers are, is essentially, since 2013, one of the formulas is we've had a mass shooting in this country every, every week. Every day. Uh, Almost every day in the last year. At least once a week. That's right. For, since That's 2013. Right. That's exactly right. Okay, Stephen, thank you very much. So mass shootings are more common these days. Just last Friday, of course, there were two mass shootings incidents, one that made national headlines in Colorado. Now we wanted to see if this is a trend, so we asked senior investigative reporter Stephen Stock to look for some answers. According to both the FBI and the Centers for Disease Control, over the last decade, America has seen an increase in the number of these type of mass shootings. But in the last three years in particular, depending on how you defined a mass shooting, the number of these shootings has gone up or remained stable. Regardless, no matter how you calculate it, there are a lot of these mass shootings in America every year. The news out of San Bernardino shocks. 14 dead, at least that many wounded. The third mass shooting in America since Friday. While mass shootings continue to grab headlines around the United States, firearms experts tell us the massive media attention given to these events only shows a small part of the overall picture of gun violence in America today. According to numbers from the FBI and the Centers for Disease Control and an analysis of those numbers by the group Everytown USA, while there have been at least 141 mass shootings in the U.S. since 2009, 21 so far this year, those shootings only make up less than 1% of all deaths due to guns each year in the U.S. Everytown USA defines mass shootings as four or more deaths, not including the shooter. Instead, according to the CDC, during the latest full year data is available, 2013, there were 11,208 homicides with a firearm, 21,175 suicides, and 84,962 injuries. A closer look at those numbers shows in most homicides tracked by the FBI, they involved handguns, at least 5,782 of them. Only 716 of those incidents involved rifles, shotguns, or other types of firearms. It's a societal issue. It's an issue that is far beyond the scope of ATF or law enforcement. Um, every time we have one of these uh, situations where we look, in, look at it, 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 
the solutions are in education, the solutions are in employment, There's, it's a multifaceted issue. Officials with the U.S. Department of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives tell us that the proliferation of all these firearms makes it almost impossible to keep up. When you look at the number of crimes committed uh, with firearms in this country and you look at the number of ATF agents that we have, um, we just don't have we just don't have the time to be to dedicate to each case that we would like to. Even though these mass shootings do make news and headlines every time they happen, and they are very tragic, gun violence experts say the reality is they still make up a very small percentage of the number of gun murder victims in America every year. In fact, they say the numbers show they make up less than one percent of all homicides by guns. I'm Stephen Stock. NBC Bay Area News.